let us all stand. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. To the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away.
Crystal Baron, I want you to come up and sit with the deacons. Amen. God has that you would come at this time.
Can we praise God for the life of Brother Richard Stevens on today who is absent from the body but now present with the Lord. Can we give God another hand of praise? Come on, for his life, for his legacy, for his memory that will live on. We thank God for putting him on loan to us for the amount of years that he did. Today is his commencement ceremony. He has graduated, amen, from earth to heaven. He's graduated from labor to reward, from work to rest. And as we begin his, his commitment, commencement ceremony and celebration, we want to begin with a hymn by our own Mr. Bradley Webb. Following that, we will have the Prayer of Comfort by Apostle Danita Jones. Then our Old Testament scripture reading, Dr. Casina Washington and our New Testament scripture by Elder Gary Lewis. And following that, we will have a musical selection. I won't complain. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would come in that order. Thank you. 
on, clap your hands and give the Lord glory. Good morning, church. Come on, let's praise the Lord. I've been given an assignment this morning to bring comfort through prayer. And first, let me give honor to the angel of this house for allowing me to stand in his pulpit. And to this awesome family. And as I get ready to go to the throne. A prayer of comfort. I just want to say. Sister Connie. It's been a privilege and an honor to. Know you and brother Richard. Because you're just not. uh, People. That walk this earth but you are citizen of the kingdom of God that walked this earth. And as I stand here saluting him in comfort to you all, I'm just honored because this man served not just in the military, but in the kingdom. So I'm going to ask you to stand for this prayer of comfort, if you would, please, if you can. Because he deserve it. Father, we come this great day in a celebration of one of your saints that you allowed to walk this earth to give us a demonstration of what it is to operate in your kingdom principle. Father, I pray that this family will continue to carry his legacy. Father, you know their hearts are heavy, but Lord, you have left us a comforter that can comfort in any situation. We pray right now that every tear that they share will be bottled. And Father, as he has stood, Lord God, in many situations, Lord God, as he has fed the poor, as he has clothed the naked, just like you have instructed us, Lord, as he has visited jails, Lord God, just like you have instructed. Father, we ask today as we celebrate his life that his wife, Lord God, would celebrate, Lord, that she met a man that was following Jesus. Lord, we thank you that his children and his grandchildren, Lord God, and great-grandchildren to come will live in the legacy that I met a man that live the legacy of Jesus the Christ. So, Father, as we celebrate his home going today, we celebrate, Lord God, that we met a man that following Jesus Christ. And we bring comfort and love and peace that you left for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. Come on and say it like you really mean it. Amen. For knowing Brother Richard Stevens, Amen. Our Old Testament scripture, taken from the book of Job, verses 1 through 2 and verses 14 through 16. Listen to the word of the Lord. Man who is born of woman is short-lived and full of turmoil. Like a flower, he comes forth and withers. He also flees like a shadow and does not remain. Verses 14 through 16. If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my struggle, I will wait until my change comes. You will call, I will answer you. You will long for the work of your hands. For now you number my steps. You do not observe my sin. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Uh, 
of a New Testament reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, verses 6 through 10. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with the hands eternal in the heaven. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we are labor that whether we are absent, present, we may be accepted of him. For we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. Giving honor to the most high God who is the head of my life, Sister Connie, family, and her precious sons, Rashawn, Rashid, and Coltrane. As I watched your father press his way from point A to point B, you could tell in his countenance that he wasn't feeling his best, but he never complained. In fact, I recall him saying to my husband and I, let's go in and watch the movie that Pastor Robinson planned for the senior saints. And as he walked towards the building, you can see the love and the passion he had in his eyes for his wife, Sister Connie Stevens, as she stood by the door patiently with that smile of hers, waiting for her husband. 56 years of matrimony. That's to be celebrated. Come on. I honor you, my sister. May the God you serve keep you and comfort you. Now, I say the God that she serves because anyone that knows Sister Stevens, come on, Mission Evangelist Ministry, Minister Wilkinson, you know what I'm talking about. What is it she always says? The God I serve. The God I serve. May the God you serve keep you close to his breath and in perfect peace. I can imagine Richard saying, I had some good days. I had some heels to Climb. I had some weary days and some lonely and sleepless nights. But when I When I, I look around And when I think things over All of my good days They outweigh my bad days so I, I won't complain 
For you see, God has been so good to me. He's been so good to me. More than anyone else in this world could ever be. God's been good to me. For he tries all of my tears away. And turn my midnight into day. So instead of complaining, I said, instead of complaining, I lift my hands in praise to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You woke me up this morning. Thank you, Lord. Started me on my way. Thank you, Lord. The food on my table. Thank you, Lord. Shoes on my feet. Thank you, Lord. Close want to say have your way have your way have your way have your way yes to your will yes to your way for I will complain Thank you for my family. I won't complain. I want to say thank you, Lord, for bringing me home. I won't complain. Amen. Thank you for the life of Brother Richard Stevens. We thank God and praise God for him on today. As we prepare for tributes and expressions, Brother Curtis Johnson is coming, who is the neighbor. Following that, our own Deacon Robert McCoy, who was good friends with Brother Richard Stevens. I would call them cut buddies. Amen. They were good friends. Both served in the media ministry. And then his brother Paul Stevens is coming. His other brother Robert Stevens will come. Grandson, Savon Stevens granddaughter, Sadia Stevens. Did I get that right? Sadia. Amen. Richard Coltrane Stevens' son and Rashid Stevens, the other son. They're going to come at this time. I know it says two minutes, but considering all of you are brothers and grandchildren and children. I don't expect you to be able to say everything you need to say about your family in two minutes. Amen. So I'm going to ask that you would come at this time in that order. Amen.
giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, Pastor Rob, Connie, and the entire team of Connie. This is going to be tough, but I'm going to get through it because I'm going to stand right on the head of the Father's word. But I want to come back and say a couple of things about Richard. <laughs> I met Richard this very well, 27 years ago. The first time Richard and I sat foot, he stepped foot in my house, we had a fun that was contagious. I'm talking about, y'all can talk about friends, you can talk about neighbors, you can talk about man, but this guy here, he was a friend to me. I don't care what happened at 240 or 235 lost to Eagle Lane, these two guys, we were dead. Richard stood by me and I stood by him on many occasions. Richard came to me one day very distraught because one of his sons had suffered a situation down in Cancun. I tell you, it's hard when you can embrace a man and cry. Richard and I cried several times over the 27 years. He talked about David. <coughs> To the pastor, minister, and officer and friend, good morning. My name is Deacon Robert McCoy. And first I would like to thank Connie for letting me be a part of Richard Homeborn. Richard, I met Richard in 2007 when Pastor Treacher was in charge. He asked everybody to volunteer at the church. So I went and volunteered into the sound booth where Richard was in charge. We worked good together. Richard was a great man. And then Richard wanted the kids to join the ministry. So they came and they joined. And so Richard said he didn't want to burn the kids out, so he made a schedule for the kids. But we had to work every Sunday. <laughs> but um, Richard was great. Be proud of Richard. Um, two months ago, I went and picked Richard up and we went out to breakfast. And Richard started telling us about how good the Lord was. He went on and on about how great the Lord was. That one of the best out we had. Plus, Richard said he prayed when he eat, he pray at night, and he pray when he get up in the morning. Y'all look at me and say, how do you know? 
glad you asked. Richard told me. <laughs> yeah, but um, we had a great time. I went to the hospital to see Richard, and um, after I got through praying, I said, I was just joking. I said, Richard, you want to hear a song? He said, no. <laughs> and then I said, why, Richard? He said, I heard you sing before. <laughs> And then, when uh, 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 two months ago, no, two weeks ago, Richard called me and said that he was happy. He was going to his granddaughter wedding. I mean, he was really happy. And so he said, Dick, when you get through, I mean, when I come back, I want you to do two things for me. So I said, Where's you just let me know? So come. You know the two things. If you want me to do it, I'm here for you. Amen. I know my two men are almost up, but uh, let me just say a couple more things. Richard was sick, but you couldn't tell he was sick. Right. Richard, he just was looking good. doctors did everything they could to get Richard back together again. It reminded me of John 14, 2. In my father's house, I many men. It wasn't so, I was told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So God touched Richard, took that pain away, and took him up to heaven. Yes. And said, if you want to see your loved one again, just mention John 3, 16. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Who shall believe in him? To what? But what? Amen. Amen. So, sister, I know not be long. I'm going to sit down. But um, I know you ain't going to be lonely because you know the Lord yourself. But if you feel lonely, just think of 1 Timothy 5 and 5. A widow who feels lonely should hope, put her hope in the Lord and pray day and night. Amen. So, in closing, in the words of the sermon of David, he shall and he will restore your soul. God bless you. Please bear with me. I'm not a speaker, but I said that I was going to do this for my brother because he truly deserves this. After Richard came back from the military, uh, my parents passed when we were young. We really didn't have too much going on, and living in, in uh, Brooklyn in the projects, we didn't have a mother and a father. Richard already had started a family. He had three boys, but he never forgot myself, and he never forgot my brother. When there were things that were needed, he was always there that I could count on. He was one of the persons that I really grew close to. And we stay close together, always talking, always conversating. 
things that were always needed, I could always count on my older brother to give me. No matter what it was, he was like a father. He stepped into my father's shoes, took over a lot of responsibilities, made sure that I had things that I needed, that my brother needed. Never forgot us. Always with us. I just want to say that I'll never forget him. That I'll always never forget him. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. My name is Sonia. I'm his wife, and I just wanted to say um, something real quick. I know we pushed for time when I first met Richard and Connie. Um, of course, when you meet someone for the first time, you're nervous about it. But when I met Richard, he said, um, when I shook his hand and um, he seen me smile and he seen that I had the gap. And I said, okay, this is good because I have the gap just like his wife that he loves so much. You know, so I was okay with that. But I just wanted to say that Richard, I'm so grateful that he did not bury his talents. He... Um, He's all about family. You know, he loved his family. And I just wanted to say to everyone, carry on the legacy that Richard has as far as being with family. It is so important. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Robert Stevens Jr. Yes, I lost a giant. And we used to pray for him. And when he got the notice to go to Vietnam, my mother almost collapsed. She almost lost her mind. She did not want him to go. But he said, I'll be back. I'll be back. He, he did it for Uncle Sam. He said, I'll be back. And that was a lovely thing. My mother stopped crying at night. And he, when he came home, she, she locked the door and didn't want him to come back. Mm. That's Amen. right. My name is Ella Stevens. I'm Robert's wife. And Richard was a true brother. He always was there for us. When I had my first baby, he treated me like that's his grandchild. He always was there. And i never forget one night I was very sick, postpartum depression with my first baby. And my husband called him up, said, can you take Ella to the emergency? He came, take me, take care of my little girl. And everything was so good. He was always there. He was always there for me. And my husband, he always take his little brother. Always there. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. I have a couple of words composed here from my grandfather. I stand before you all today with a heavy heart to speak about my grandfather who I, including all of his grandchildren, knew him as Pop Pop. Pop Pop was an incredible man who touched the lives of so many people. And for our family, he was a pillar of strength. But also, he was a symbol of love as well. He was always there for us, offering his guidance, support, and his wisdom when we needed it. But as we gather here to mourn his passing, I think it's also important to celebrate his life. Yes. Yes. And all the wonderful things that he did for us and the memories that he gave us. To name a few, 
Pop, pop, he, uh, he loved his massages. <laughs> and he always asked his grandchildren for scalp massages and foot massages whenever he could. <sighs> pop, pop was a big reason that I'm able to swim as well as I am today. Always taking me down to Mr. Gary's pool, teaching me how to get over my fear of the water. Um, another moment that I loved sharing with my grandfather was when we got to play games together. He always loved playing games with the family, Uno, apples to apples, all sorts. And no matter how long it took him to play his hand, I loved every minute he was there with us. <laughs> I take solace in the fact that Pop Pop is in a better place now. And I like to believe that he is at peace, that he is happy, and that he left us with the strength, his wisdom, and his love. That um, we as a family can take with us forever throughout our lives. Thank you all. My name is Sadiah Stevens, and I am um, one of Richard's granddaughters. But yeah, we all called him Pop Pop. And I'd like to remark that in times like these, it is very easy to say, oh, you almost made it to your next birthday, or oh, you almost made it to another summer, or oh, you almost made it to my graduation, and especially, oh, you almost watched your granddaughter get married. But we often forget all the things that you did get to see. Um, you've taught me how to play chess. <laughs> you have played numerous games of Uno way past 9 p.m. <laughs> you have watched us learn how to swim. You've, you've taught us about God. You've introduced such powerful things into our lives. And one main thing that you've taught me about was passion. Once I was on the family computer, and the password was something crazy. I couldn't quite understand things yet. And I was like, what is a jazz night? <laughs> My grandfather was a part of a jazz band. I think it was a quartet. And um, that one sentence led to a lecture, and that's OK. Because with every question I had came five stories. And in passing on that legacy, I learned that through his passion with music, he named all of his children after jazz musicians. They all play instruments, all are performers. Um, through that passion, every single time I was in his car, jazz music was playing. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of music now, but if you asked me if I liked anything, it would be live jazz because I'm spoiled. And it was introduced to me. I used to live with my father every other weekend. And when we would go to church, I would have to get there super early because my dad serves the church just like his dad did. And I would sit right in the back, kind of where they are now, and I'd be in the booth, and I'd watch him tinker with everything. And I wouldn't understand any of it. And then I used to come down to Georgia to see my grandparents every summer. And I never got to see my pop-pop during the services until I went to the back. And lo and behold, it used to be right there. <laughs> my grandfather used to be in the back working the sound just like I saw my dad doing. And being able to have a traceable legacy where you can directly see passion that flows through the lineage of your family is important, especially when it's small gifts that everybody could share, like music. <laughs> I now attend the Berklee College of Music, um, and I'm able to see um, musicians all the time, sometimes talk about my grandfather and about how much he loves music, and being able to see how he was able to take his passion and put it through 
the bloodline that runs so strong today, especially with the gaps. <laughs> I would also like to remark that my grandfather has been more than giving. I never understood what pain looked like if you left it up to him. Every time he was in the hospital, we were reassured that he would be okay. They're like the hip replacements and any sort of failure. It was never a failure. I was told not even to say that word because he would make it out on the other side. And in this time as well, he has made it out on the other side in probably the best way possible. Um, I'm glad that he leaves behind service and passion. I'm very thankful for him. I'm 21 years old. I would not get on my knees to play horsey at this age, so I don't know what he was going through when he was doing it for me. <laughs> Just always giving. I never knew pain. I only knew love. I only knew passion. I think I'm done. Good morning. I don't know how you follow that. I just don't. Um, it's a lot of great things that have people have said about my father. Um, I'm his first. I'm Coltrane. Named after John Coltrane, like she passionately spoke. We're all named after jazz musicians. Um, I'm going to miss that dude. He was my dude. Yeah. I spoke to him every day mm -hmm. while he was going through his dialysis. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we would talk about everything from sneakers to hats. How's the car doing? What's going on in your house? Everything is fine, Dad. Everything. You sure? <laughs> well, what are you going to do? You, you, you in Atlanta. Where I'm in Orlando. <laughs> you know? But when he did. Drop the jewels, I listened. You know, um, I listened. And I'm listening now, Dad. I love you. As you can imagine, with all going on, with funeral planning, there's not a lot of time to think, there's not a lot of time to prepare for the things you have to do, like standing here and saying something. Someone told me, don't worry, the words will find you. Well, I confess to you this morning that they haven't found me yet. <laughs> However, 
I'm holding on to the peace that I got after my mom said that to me. And then after she said that to me, the pastor who came in yesterday, he led with that same mantra and it confirmed it. And I thank you for that, Pastor. My father left me and my brothers our love of music. And myself and my brother, Rasan, we've gone on to do some pretty really cool things because of music and with music. And I know we got that from our dad. He would play the air saxophone to his favorite jazz music. I didn't understand what that was until I wanted to play guitar and I would play the air guitar. It all starts to make sense. My dad always told me to stay close to your brothers. And we will intend to do that. I want to say thank you to my dad's friends, Deacon McCoy, and on our block, Mr. Gary Coates and his wife, Mr. Curtis Johnson and Mrs. Johnson. Thank you for being great neighbors. Thank you for your friendship, my father. <laughs> Daddy, thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for disciplining us when we needed it. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for marrying my mother. Thank you for staying married to my father. I know it wasn't easy. It wasn't. And mom, thank you too. Thank you for everything. We're giving dad the accolades he deserves, but it's all, all because of you as well. All of it is because of you as well. And so I said it last night and I will say it again. Well done, daddy. Well done. Go be with your family. All that preceded you and them. Go be with them now. And we will do what we're supposed to do because of you. Amen. Beautiful remarks. This time we will read the obituary silently and then we will have a video and then we will come back with another musical selection great is thy faithfulness sister Sylvia Gardner amen
some years ago, Sister Connie and Brother Richard took me under their wings and molded me into a soulist. In some circles, they call you a vocalist. Who, who could imagine that a woman who's almost 70 years old can live a childhood dream? God brought those two angels in my life. And I'm so humbly grateful. It all started with this hymn. And because of this hymn, I not only sing for the hearing, but the heart of hearing in deaf community. And I thank you. And the hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Early one Sunday morning. A faithful, hardworking man of God said to me, you would be perfect for the media ministry. Shortly thereafter, I realized I couldn't do one third of what Brother Richard Stevens did, so I quit. But over the years, I admired his faithfulness, his diligence, his commitment. Oh, he served a flawlessly faithful God. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, oh God, my There is no shadow of turning with thee.
Stevens didn't do a whole lot of talking. May the works I do speak for me. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer someone with a word or with a song, if I can show someone who's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. That was Richard Stevens. Silent servant, faithful servant, week in and week out. He served right there in the media ministry. Every Sunday after church, Brother Stevens would be the one to bring me a CD and a DV of the message that I had preached. And he would always come in my office and say, good job, Pastor, good job, Pastor. And I know some Sundays it wasn't a good job. But he didn't want to hurt my feelings. So he would say, good job, Pastor. Because you know, preaching is like going to court. You don't know how you're going to come out. Amen. And so I appreciate the encouragement week in and, and week out. Bible study, he was there. He would bring me the microphone every week. Always in church, loving God, serving God. When you saw him, you saw Sister Connie. When you saw Sister Connie, you saw him. 56 years. God bless them to be one. Amen. And um, we're in a time now where people can't stay together 56 days. Yet alone. Come on, somebody. 56 years. 
And that's truly a blessing. I was saying on last week in our couples ministry, and Deacon Asbury can uh, attest to this, that we don't have enough married models in ministry. 50% of every marriage in this country end in divorce, and half of those who are divorced are Christians. But when you saw Richard and you saw Connie, you saw a married model. Come on, somebody, in ministry, they represented that. And I thank you, and I think of um, our mission here is, is growing in the word of God and giving to the work of God and going into the world for God. When I think about the last part of our mission statement, our vision statement, going in the world for God, I always think about Connie Stevens. Amen, and Richard Stevens, because when you think about outreach, you think about evangelism, what we've been called by God to do, they did this every week. Come on, somebody. They would go in nursing homes. They didn't have this attitude of, when you talk about service, sometimes we confuse service with serve us. And they didn't come here to be served, but they came to church to serve. And Jesus said, let the greatest among you be the servant. I'm learning God can't use us. Some of you are too high. You become legends in your own mind. God can't use you when you're way up here. He can only use you when you're meek and low and humble. And that's the type of servant that Richard Stevens was. He was a humble servant. He served with humility. When I thought about what I would say today, I, I thought about Paul. And I thought about what Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 and 6 through 7, where he says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. He says, The time of my departure is at hand. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And then he says, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And he says, not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. When Paul writes, Timothy, who was his, his spiritual son, when he writes Timothy here in this, this letter, he, he realizes that, like Richard, he's coming to the end of his life. And he uses language that is similar to what one might use when he or she is getting ready to catch a plane. He says, the time has come for my departure. When Paul pins these words, he's using a word that really takes its meaning from the idea of a ship sitting in the harbor. What Paul is suggesting here is that the time has come to cut loose the ropes that holds the ship in the harbor. In other words, Paul was, was really saying it's almost time for my ship to set sail. And Paul's attitude seems here in this letter of a person who is excited about dying. 
He almost makes it seem like a joy to die. And when I look at this, this letter, I believe I see why Paul was excited about dying. First of all, like, like Richard, Paul says, listen, I have fought the good fight. In other words, Paul uses language here that basically means to contend for a prize. He uses language that means to struggle. And I discovered in this life, you will have tribulation. In this life, you will have struggle. I say all the time, you're either in a storm, you just come out of a storm, or you're headed, come on somebody, for a storm. He uses language that means to struggle. As a matter of fact, Paul tells us exactly what those struggles were. He says in 2 Corinthians, he says, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently. He says, I've been flogged more severely and been exposed to death again and again. Paul says, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. In other words, I was whipped like a dog. He says, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times, Paul says, I was shipwrecked. He says, I've been constantly on the move. He says, I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen in danger from the Gentiles. He says, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. Paul says, I have labored and told and have often gone without sleep. He says, I've known hunger and thirst. I've been cold and naked. In other words, Paul was saying, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. He says, but I've had to struggle in this thing called life. However, Paul says, the reason why I can face my departure with excitement and confidence is because in spite of all of my struggles, in spite of all of my battles, in spite of all of my tough times, Paul says, God has now given me the victory. In other words, Paul was excited because Paul knew that his departure down here meant his arrival up there. That's why he said, and I'm glad you, you quoted that scripture today, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord because only in the body of Christ can one be absent and present. Come on somebody at the same time. Absent from confusion but present with the one who says I'll keep you in perfect peace <laughs> if you keep your mind stayed on me. Absent from tears and pain and crying and present with the one who says I will wipe away all tears from your eyes absent from sickness and pain and present with the one who says, by my stripes, you are already healed. Paul was excited because he knew that his departure down here meant his arrival up there. Another way to say it is, like, like Richard, Paul knew he had another destination. He knew he had another home. He knew he had another address. Reminds me of the story about the little girl who was walking through the cemetery late one evening and an old man who sat at the gate asked her, he said, little girl, aren't you afraid to go through the cemetery in the dark by yourself? And the little girl said, oh no, I'm not afraid <laughs> because my home is just on the other side of it. And that's all I came to tell this family today, that on the other side of the grave, on the other side of death, come on somebody, Richard has another home, Paul says, eternal in the heavens. Now, I also knew that, that Richard, 
I knew he liked music. He liked jazz. And so I'm going to tell you this story because I, I believe he would love this today. It, it reminds me, it reminds me of, of the legendary singer Ray Charles. It is said that at a meal dance in, in Brownsville, Pennsylvania, in December of 1958, that the late singer Ray Charles and his band had played their entire set, but they still had 12 minutes to fill. And Ray Charles told his band and, and backup singers, he said, y'all just follow me. And he began, Sister Cunning, to improvise on the piano. And Charles then started a series of riffs and ordered the Raylettes to repeat after him in a call and response manner for the remainder of the time. And the crowd was instantly energized and the response was so overwhelming that the result of his improvisation that night was the hit single, What I'd Say. And this song was, was such a hit and it was so widely requested that Charles and his manager decided to record it. However, Tom Dow, the recording engineer, had a problem during the recording. And the problem was what I'd say lasted over seven and a half minutes when the normal length of radio played songs was around two and a half minutes. However, Dow came up with this brilliant solution, this brilliant idea to solve the problem. Dow addressed the recording issues by mixing three versions of the song. And the song was Watch Now split into two, three and a half minute sides of a single record titling the song What I'd Say Part One and What I'd Say Part Two. Now, part one was on side A. Part two was on side B. Uh, Sam, side A was the beginning. Side A got everyone excited. Side A was good. However, the best part of the song was not on side A. It was on side B. In other words, side A had the beginning, but side B had the ending. Side A, stay with me, was good, but side B was the best. So if you wanted to hear the best of what I'd say, you had to turn the record over, preach Pastor Robinson, to the other side. And that's all I came to tell this, this family on the day that, that this life is just side A, but the best that God has to offer is on the other side. On this side is earth. <laughs> But on the other side, come on somebody, is heaven. On this side is labor. That's a good place to hit me right there. But on the other side is reward. On this side is corruption. But on the other side is incorruption. On this side is mortality. But on the other side is immortality. On this side is worry. But on the other side, the weary will be at rest. On this side is weeping. But on the other side, weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning and that's all I came to tell this family that Richard is on the other side now look at somebody and tell them he's on the other side he, he's on the other side where he will stick his sword in the golden sands of time to study war no more he's on the other side where the lion will lay down with the lamb He's on the other side where the wicked will cease from troubling and where the weary, I said the weary, will be at rest. He's on the other side. And that's all I came to tell you today, that he has a new home over in glory. For I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you 
may be also. For if the earthly tent of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building, a house not made by hands. And that's where he is today. He's in a better place. He's in a better place. I thank God for Brother Richard. I thank God for his new home. The songwriter said, I got a new home over in glory. And it's mine. Mine. Do y'all know that? All of mine. And then the next verse says, I got a new name over in glory. And it's mine. Mine. All mine. And that's where Richard is today. He's in his new home. We prayed, we prayed for his healing. We prayed that God would heal him. And kind of God did heal him. He doesn't always heal the way we want him to heal. But he still heals. Come on, somebody. Nonetheless, he, he didn't take the sickness away from Richard. But let me tell you what he did. He took Richard away from the sickness. He said, come on with me. You ain't got to be worked on no more. You know, no more hospitals, no more doctors, no more nurses. Just come on and go with me to a better place. Lord, we thank you. We thank you today for his life. We thank you for the testimony of his life. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for his children. Thank you for the grandchildren. Thank you for reminding us, as his granddaughter said a few moments ago, instead of thinking what all he will not see, thank you for allowing him to see all that he did see. Thank you, God, because we know he wanted to get to that wedding. But you saw fit to bring him on home. And now he's preparing a place for us so we can see him again one day. So, Lord, I thank you for, for his life. I thank you for this family. Keep your arms around them. Give them peace that surpasses all understanding. Undergird them today. Keep them strong, Lord. I know this is not an easy time, but we know you can turn those hard, bitter moments in life. You can turn them one by one into precious, sweet memories. And so we stand on it right now on your word, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you will always comfort us. We stand on it right now, and it's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, and every child of God said, amen. Can we give God a hand of praise for the life of Brother Richard Stevens? God bless you. Amen. Our acknowledgments at this time. Deutsch Williamson Mortuary. Come on up here. Sister Connie your family, friends, and the Olivet family of Brother Richard Stevens. Acknowledgements first, Sister Connie, the evangelism team that you have led for years and taken so many under your wings and taught us what mission is, have a card that they will give, that I will give to you on their behalf acknowledging and remembering Brother Richard. And then on behalf of the Olivet Church, in loving memory of Brother Richard Stevens, a resolution that says, death 
leaves a heartache no one can heal, but love leaves a memory no one can steal. Whereas we, the members of the Olivet Baptist Church of Christ, Inc., want the Stevens family to know that even as we mourn with you in the passing of a faithful servant, as Christians we know he has gone home to be with the Lord. Whereas in the providence of God, the leadership and membership of the Olivet Church of Christ feel it befitting to support and embrace the Stevens family, especially Brother Stevens' dear wife, Sister Connie Stevens, who also serves this ministry. Whereas Brother Stevens' acceptance and commitment to serving God was known to many who got to know him early in life before he joined the Olivet family in 2001. At Olivet, he served faithfully under the late Pastor Reverend Dr. Howard Creasy, Jr. and our present Pastor Reverend Dr. William H. Robinson. And whereas Brother Stevens found a joy in serving as Olivet's first media ministry tech, although he faced many challenges in operating the camera and keyboard, the mics and new software, he never gave up. He kept the faith. Richard knew one day he wanted to hear his master say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Whereas Brother Stevens appeared quiet but would come alive in fellowships with friends and when talking about his grandchildren. He often spoke with Deacon McCoy about praying to the Lord. Brother Stevens continued to serve this ministry until his health failed, never accepting a salary nor an honorarium. Therefore, be it resolved that the Lord has called home a loyal and faithful servant. As a church family, we mourn with you, Sister Connie, and your entire family. But be consoled by the words of Jesus, who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now be it resolved that the Olivet Baptist Church of Christ, Inc., 877 Highway 314 North Fayetteville, Georgia, proclaims this day, April 21st, 2023, in memory of our own Richard Stevens. A copy of this resolution is going to be given to you, Sister Connie, and a copy will be kept in the church archives. Humbly submitted on this, the 21st day of April, 2023, by the officers and members of the Olivet Baptist Church of Christ, Inc., in the city of Fayetteville, state of Georgia, Sister Catherine Jones, Elder Senior Catherine Jones, church clerk, Reverend Dr. William Holmes Robinson, servant, pastor, teacher. Amen. Amen. Let me take this time to first and foremost acknowledge our media ministry. This is the ministry that Brother Richard Stevens served on, and I want them to just wave their hands. Some are in the back. Amen. Can we praise God for them? And they worked with him each week, and we're praying for you. I know how much he meant to, to you all, and so we're lifting you up on today. Also, thank you to our deacons, our trustees, uh, thank you greeters, ushers, Sister Sadie, our nurses ministry, um, our praise team, amen, musicians. Also, I want to thank God for our bereavement ministry who have served this family this week uh, so diligently. I want to take this moment to thank God for you, our ministers. Amen. Thank you to all of our ministers, our elders who are serving on today. Thank you, Dorch Williamson Mortuary. Uh, don't they look good? Amen. And the only reason I'm saying that is because my <laughs> wife is standing up here with me. Amen. And so I praise God for, I praise God for, for uh, Deutsch Williamson and Lady Erica, you representing Olivet Well. Amen. You're representing Deutsch Williamson. 
well as you serve as one of the directors there. All right? You ready? You speaking? Okay. To the pastor of this church, Dr. Robinson, the members of the Olivet Church, to the extended family and friends, the family of Mr. Richard Stevens wishes to acknowledge with sincere appreciation every phone call, every card, every act of kindness that has been extended to them during this their hour of bereavement. We do ask that you will please continue to keep this family lifted in your prayers in the many days, weeks, months, and even years to come due to their difficult loss. As we prepare for the recessional, we will ask at this time for the pallbearers and flower ladies to please come forward because we are on a time schedule to get to Canton. The family will have a repast after they return from Georgia National Cemetery. The location is in the program. Thank you. It's in the program. What? The repast will be held at Hopeful Community Center, 122255 New Hope Road, Fayetteville, Georgia. Thank you. I'm going to ask everyone except for the family to stand at this time. I've got a new home over in glory and it's mine, mine. Mine. I've got a new home over in glory, and it's mine, mine, mine. Come on, preachers. I've got a new home over in Zion, and it's mine, mine, mine. I've got a new home. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall be. Over in 
Over in Zion, 